I'm going to attempt to give a brief overview of each of the habits. It's like getting a kind of airplane view of the whole mountain range before we go down to explore the detail. Habit one, be proactive, basically means that your life is a product of your values, not your feelings. That your life or the organization's life is a product of your decisions, not your conditions. The opposite of being proactive is to be reactive, which basically means that your life is a function of your feelings, your moods, your impulses, other people's treatment. The underlying principle of habit one, be proactive, is to take responsibility. The concept is you and I have the capacity to choose our response. Habit two, begin with the end in mind, basically means that all things are created twice. And habit two is the first creation. Habit two, begin with the end in mind, means that you get a mental image, a picture, of where you want to end up in this meeting, in this relationship, this year, in your life. To a company, it is the vision it has of its future. It is the creation of that vision. Habit two is based on the principle of vision, of purpose, of meaning, of mission. Habit three, to put first things first, is the second creation. To put first things first means you decided what the first things were in habit two, now you have the discipline and the commitment to keep them first. The opposite of putting first things first is to put second or third or fourth things first. That's why many people really deeply value their family relationships, their health, their personal integrity. But they get caught up in the powerful social value systems, timetables and agendas of their culture. Never question it so that the first creation has already been done for them, done to them in the form of programs, scripts that they never question. Then they get on this ladder of success and they arrive at the top rung only then to realize the ladder is leaning against the wrong wall. They come to realize that no one on their deathbed ever wished they'd spent more time at the office. <laughs> As Goethe put it, things which matter most must never be at the mercy of things which matter least. Habit four, think win-win, is the habit of mutual benefit. The underlying paradigm or principle is abundance. There is plenty out there and to spare. So you don't have to be threatened by the strengths of other people. You can nurture competency around you higher than your own. It doesn't threaten you. You can share knowledge. You can share recognition, gain, profit. The opposite is scarcity, not abundance. It's like a piece of pie. There's only so much. If you get the recognition, I may not get it. If I share gain or profit with you, I, we will have less. Habit four to think win-win comes from the principle of abundance, not scarcity, meaning the pie gets larger and larger and larger. Habit five, seek first to understand, then to be understood is the habit of empathic communication, meaning you always seek to understand first. The teacher diagnoses, pre-assesses before teaching. The doctor diagnoses before prescribing. 
the attorney does discovery before developing his or her own case or brief. Understand first before you seek to be understood, before you seek to contribute, before you take action, before you have the basis for judgment. Habit six, synergize, is the habit of creative cooperation, seeking to understand. We create something that was not there before. That takes high levels of cooperation. The principle behind habit six is the principle that one plus one can equal three, four, ten, twenty, a thousand. It's the principle of putting two boards together that are stronger in total than adding the sum of the boards separate. It's the principle of valuing differences, not tolerating differences, not accepting differences, celebrating differences. Habit seven is called Sharpen the saw. It is the principle of renewal, the principle of continuous learning, continuous improvement, getting better constantly. It's based on the principle that we have the capability of charging our own battery. The opposite of habit seven, sharpen the saw, is to just let the blade get dull, to let the mind atrophy to let the body lose its tone and its vitality through junk food and no exercise and trying to live a life of hedonism, pleasure seeking, rather than one of contribution and service. It renews each of the other six habits. <laughs>